all about, what conflict in the war hammer world is all about. So that's why we did Dread Fleet, because we thought it would be great. Um, but it's not the sort of thing that we're going to support in the long term. Will we do more of these things in the future? Probably. Probably, because they're really exciting. Um, but two years ago, we had no idea we were going to do Dread Fleet. We launched Space Hulk, and we had no idea that this would come two years later. So we're in no position to say what the next one will be, if there will be a next one. But we're aware that they're very exciting. They give us an opportunity to do something a bit different and make a big noise about it, and we love that. So we'll look for those sorts of opportunities in the future. So that's what we've done this year. Uh, the couple of questions that I had that I wanted to kind of head off, because they usually get asked by people, um, some of them might have already been answered. People want to know, when are you going to do something new for my army? And I hope we've shown this year through White Dwarf and the web, there's loads of ways we can present you with exciting new things for your bit of the hobby, whether that's painting or gaming, collecting miniatures. It won't always be dependent on the next book that's out. So even though we're not telling you until really close to when it comes out what the next thing will be, there should still be loads of exciting ways to get involved or do new things with the hobby every month the magazine or the website. <coughs> the other question that comes up a lot in these sorts of presentations is what about the squats? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, uh, if you're not familiar with the squats, the squats were dwarfs in space years ago, fundamentally, and uh, they died. And everyone asks, because I think it's funny to ask every year. Are you going to ask me about the Yeah, oh. uh, I kind of hear a bit of a rumour that uh, the, the squats are going to be renamed demi Demiog. Rumours, rumours, rumours. Where would we be without rumour and speculation? Uh, well, you, you'll see an awful lot of rumours. The internet's full of them. It's uh, mostly what's there, I think. Um, the standard response to any of rumour questions or any specific questions of detail about releases is we are working on all sorts of exciting things all of the time. Please keep your eyes on White Dwarf and the Games Workshop website for more information. And I can say that all day. I've been practising all weekend. So I'm going to open up to any questions in a moment, anything from the panel or any of the nonsense I've been talking about. But we're not going to go into any specifics. We're going to talk about the reasons why we've done the sorts of things we've done. And you can take from that whatever you like, what that might mean for the future. Um, the only point I'd say about specifics of product releases, people want to know when are we going to do Titans, when are we going to do a plastic Thunderhawk gunship. I think I can say with confidence that Games Workshop will probably do all of these things. Games Workshop plans to be here for a very long time. Games Workshop will be here after I'm dead. I'm pretty sure of this. So I can probably answer, so yeah, we'll do that. Games Workshop will do that. Whatever it is you want, Games Workshop will do it all. I might be dead by the time it happens, but I have confidence that Games Workshop will get around to it. Because if it's something that people are thinking about, it's probably something pretty cool. And we'd love to make more cool stuff, um, but there's only so many things we can do each month, each year. So please have some patience. And otherwise, I'll invite you to ask any questions you'd like at all. Um, obviously, Forgeard has started developing uh, older Mark Marine items. Uh, is that something that Games Workshop in itself are hoping to invest time into, or is that going to be an exclusive Ford Rovers project? Do you mean the types of armour themselves, or uh, what you can do with the heresy era, so the older era? Warhammer 30,000. This is the thing that people are putting in mouth yeah, again. Um, I, I think we look at the 31st millennium um, in the same way that we look at new armies for Warhammer. So we could do that, but we probably could do loads and loads and loads more stuff with Warhammer 40,000, which is a setting for all sorts of alien races and space marines that aren't really in 30 Do you have a take on that from games development at all, Joyce? Is that uh, well, no, kind of along the same kind of lines, really. Uh, the 40k is set uh, now, as it were, in, uh, in uh, 40,000 years in the future, not 30,000 years, uh, and that's really where we focus on. Um, I think in the past it's been really easy for us to, to get distracted by cool and other interesting ideas, but the, uh, the, the the main setting has suffered because of that. That's part of the reason that uh, Forge World exists. It can take up the slack there, you know, and do cool stuff that the Wild Studio is concentrating on the main Forge K background. Yeah. No, Gerald, I absolutely love uh, buying plants here at the museum, but I think it's fantastic. We used to be keeping up the collectors and the old messengers on the website just because some of the old ones are fantastic anyway, you can go like I've messing up some of them. We we be keeping those up just so we can still buy those particular models if they want. Um, eventually we do plan to make more and more stuff available in Finecast, Citadel Dog Finecast. Initially it'll be the stuff that you get in the stores and then we'll be looking at things that are available through direct on the website. Um, 
we don't propose to stop making or making any particular models available, we might change the material that they are available in at so some point. Even there, they might change into point of That's probably the most accurate way of looking at it. Um, but we always constantly undergo a little range of reviews, looking at what's popular, what people actually like, what they buy, because if someone only buys one something a year, it might not be worth us maintaining the space on the web to show it off to people. But equally, we sometimes bring things back. We've done stuff in the Hall of Fame in White Dwarf, uh, where some miniatures are so popular with the designers that we thought, well, if this is a great example of a Citadel miniature, let's make it available to people. And if we do that again now, we'd probably look to do an older miniature in resin for the first time, rather than just bringing it back in. One day, one day, after I'm dead. <laughs> that makes it sound like I don't want it to happen, but it'll probably happen with <laughs> my dead body. Hello. <coughs> Back in the 80s, uh, Games Workshop hired a band called Board to do music. Would Games Workshop ever consider doing that again because it was very successful? Do you mean specifically hiring Bolt Thrower? Well, well, well anyone who would do music for the whole Times have changed. Um, you around then? Uh, I was around then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, was, uh, it was an interesting time, I have to say. I think that uh, the guy who ran Games Workshop back then had this real thing about uh, all of the guys in the studio being rock stars. I can remember us having to stand and have photographs taken like for the back of album covers and things. Uh, the truth is sadly uh, not quite so rock and roll. Uh, really. <laughs> so so the back of the uh, Yeah, yeah. So it was a little bit of a, a blind alley. So I don't think we'll be doing it again. Yeah. But never say never. Maybe after we're all dead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the, the larger scale metal figures historically, like Ogrins, mm -hmm. the Imperial Guard, you'd have three or four different options, you know, three or four different um, versions of the miniature. When the protesters came out, there's one figure with perhaps like, two variant arms. I was wondering whether there's something to do with the, uh, the packaging process or the marketing or the, the design process of fine cast that limits the number of variations and what they can make. Uh, no, but that won't go too far into marketing range really stuff because it's very tedious and it's not fun and exciting which is what games days all about um, when we've made Citadel Finecast stuff when we made the boxes uh, one of the examples was the Ushanti so uh, we've got three Ushanti in a box the minimum number of Ushanti you need for a unit is three and we wanted a Citadel Finecast purchase in a store to be a pretty self-contained thing you need to be able to walk away with a box knowing that you've got the character or the unit that you need um, for whatever reason only one grotesque body and some arms were made we didn't just want to put three of them in a box and put it on the shelf of them, you know, the unit. So we just made it available through directors, it's just a one-off. We might go back and make more in the future, we might make different bodies or something like that. Um, but we're not limited in that regard. You will see you know, sort of fine cast stuff in resin that shows quite a lot of functionality and options. I think the grotesque was a bit of a, an aberration. Is the games developer for a particular codex chosen? I'll make Johnson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there are a number of, uh, of ways that it comes about. Uh, um, in particular, if somebody's passionate to do a book, that counts for a lot. Yeah, enthusiasm, passion, cool ideas uh, will count. Uh, it depends on what everybody's doing at the time. You know, there's, there's a lot of work, we're all working all the time as part of the games dev team, so people will often have their time just full with projects that are overrunning and stuff, so it depends who's available as well. Um, I think those are the two reasons. One thing that we don't uh, really worry about terribly much is cons consumer reaction to a uh, to what the, the guys are for. It's, uh, it's just not the way that, <coughs> that, we, uh, that we do things, really. It's uh, the, you know, everybody that I work with I know as, as a friend and a colleague, and I admire them all. Um, if I get to work in <coughs> So I'd be happy to work with anybody on anything, you know, and uh, um, I think that's the important thing, really. You know, it's their passion, their enthusiasm, what they, what they want to bring to that project. And quite often they'll have been going on about bloody ages anyway, you know, kind of nagging you and saying, why can't we do this book? I've got this really great idea. And so it's just obvious who to, who to put on it. Last issue of the book, um, uh, I actually received quite late 